I'm Amy Goodman here with Juan Gonzalez. We're broadcasting from the studios of Can TV here in Chicago. Hi, Juan. Hi, Amy, and welcome to all of our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world. In Chicago, Democrats held a ceremonial roll call at the Democratic National Convention Tuesday to nominate Vice President Kamala Harris to be president, along with her running mate, Governor Tim Waltz. Harris accepted the nomination virtually from Milwaukee, where she and Waltz addressed a packed arena, the same site where the RNC was held last month. The second night of the DNC in Chicago was headlined by former President Barack Obama and former First Lady Michelle Obama. This is part of what Michelle Obama said. She understands that most of us will never be afforded the grace of failing forward. We will never benefit from the affirmative action of generational wealth. choke in a crisis, we don't get a second, third, or fourth chance. If things don't go our way, we don't have the luxury of whining or cheating others to get further ahead. No. We don't get to change the rules so we always win. If we see a mountain in front of us, we don't expect there to be an escalator waiting to take us to the top. Kamala Harris, the steel of her spine, the steadiness of her upbringing, the honesty of her example, and yes, the joy of her laughter and her light. It couldn't be more obvious. Of the two major candidates in this race, only Kamala Harris truly understands the unseen labor and unwavering commitment that has always made America great. Now, un unfortunately, we know what comes next. We know folks are going to do everything they can to distort her truth. My husband and I sadly know a little something about this. For years, Donald Trump did everything in his power to try to make people fear us. See, his, his limited, narrow view of the world made him feel threatened by the existence of two hardworking, highly educated, successful people who happen to be black. seeking might just be one of those black jobs. for real ideas and solutions that will actually make people's lives better. Look, because cutting our health care, taking away our freedom to control our bodies, the freedom to become a mother through IVF like I did, those things are not going to improve the health outcomes of our wives, mothers, and daughters. Shutting down the Department of Education, banning our books, None of that will prepare our kids for the future. Demonizing our children for being who they are and loving who they love, look, that doesn't make anybody's life better. Instead, instead, it only
only makes us small. And let me tell you this, going small is never the answer. Going small is the opposite of what we teach our kids. Going small is petty, it's unhealthy, and quite frankly, it's unpresidential. What they unleashed on her family? That was former First Lady Michelle Obama at the DNC on Tuesday night. She then introduced her husband, former President Barack Obama, who repeatedly criticized Donald Trump. As we gather here tonight, the people who will decide this election are asking a very simple question. Who will fight for me? Who's thinking about my future, about my children's future, about our future together? One thing is for certain. Donald Trump is not losing sleep over that question. Here's a 78-year-old billionaire who has not stopped whining about his problems since he rode down his golden escalator nine years ago. It has been a constant stream of, of gripes and grievances. That, that's actually been getting worse now that he's afraid of losing to Kamala. There's the childish nicknames, the crazy conspiracy theories, this weird obsession with crowd sizes. Former President Barack Obama speaking at the Democratic National Convention Tuesday night. 